Well, it's Tuesday in Berea. Usually, it's all quiet on the Western Front, but now, not today. We had to go back at it, and we got, we got some fire for ready for you guys out there. Deshaun Watson is back in the mix. The Browns, of course, have their uh, press uh, conference, a press release, uh, talking about Deshaun Watson being active, added to the active roster. We'll go over that and, and what that means for the team, and then we'll kind of break it down like this. You know, we'll go by the receiver group as well in the second uh, segment. We'll talk about what it means for those guys, Amari Cooper, uh, Anthony Schwartz, and Donovan Peoples-Jones, and getting Deshaun Watson back. How does that affect them on the field? Uh, third segment, we'll get into the tight end position room. Um, we'll talk about the tight ends. We'll talk about whether or not uh, they can come out and, be, and hit the ground running. David and Joku had a nice little report building with Jacoby Brissett. Can he still have that same type of energy with Deshaun Watson? And then also in that, that segment, we will definitely talk about the running back position. Uh, Nick Chubb, Kareem Hunt, uh, obviously they will be running the ball some, but will Jacob, will uh, Deshaun Watson be able to integrate those guys into the passing game? And will that be a big focal part of what Kevin Stefanski wants to do moving forward? All of these things are on the table. We get ready for one of the most more exciting weeks in the Cleveland Browns season this week, going against the Houston Texans. A lot of storylines, and if you want the storylines, we'll give them to you all here on the next Locked on Browns podcast. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast brought to you by the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day, your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Of course, 92.3 The Fans Barbershop Saturday mornings, obviously other opportunities to catch Garrett Bush on 92.3 The Fan throughout the week, pregame, postgame coverage. For your Buckeyes, your Browns, your Cavaliers, and when the time comes, the Cleveland Guardians. We appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns. Now on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the show. Make sure you have notifications on. Do us a favor, as you guys all know so well in the chat here. Throw a like on each episode for us, guys. Just helps with some simple promotion for the show. Helps the show get out there. A little bit more. Um, you guys have all been grateful, uh, so great about that, and we are certainly grateful to you for that. Yes, USA is playing today. Right now, currently up one nothing. But look, man, it's a big week. And Garrett said, "Look, one of the most anticipated weeks in Cleveland Browns this season. This can conceivably one be one of the most anticipated weeks in Cleveland Browns history." Browns Tuesday, as they do every Tuesday, we get a nice little packet of where things are. They send a depth chart. You usually never see much on the depth chart. Um, but guess what? There is a big all change, a big noticeable change, as number four, Deshaun Watson, has now been entrenched, reinstated. He will be I believe will be the difference maker for a long, long time here in Cleveland in one Deshaun Watson. Awkward enough, first trip, first game, will be in Houston. We're going to get into that news of the today. It just – Look, that's not where we're at, man. We did, we did plenty of coverage on this and all of that. That stuff's put to bed. Um, don't want to talk about it. It's not really a part of anything right now. It's about a number four taking the field here uh, for your Cleveland Browns. We're going to get into this today. We're going to talk a little bit how it's going to work with the wide receiver room, You know, the tight end room, the running backs. Is it going to be a part of the passing game? Is it not going to be part of the passing game? So, you know, we're going to get into all that. You know, But, gee, it's been long anticipated. It feels like it's been forever. And a day since the Browns on St. Patrick's Day initially made the move to bring in Deshaun Watson before we got the initial news that it was a six-game suspension. Then we got the news after that that it was going to be an 11-game suspension. Your four and seven Cleveland Browns, we're not sure exactly how this is going to work out in the long run, but he is here. It is time. The Browns are knowing, now going to get to see their high-priced investment quarterback Deshaun Watson. 
Yeah, um, for a lot of people, um, this is this is kind of crazy. You know, if you look at it through history and the context of of quarterback play, um, you know, we've had a couple number one overall picks at quarterback. We have Tim Couch, um, we have Baker Mayfield, we have some stuff, Brandon Whedon in the mix there. Uh, you also have guys like uh, you know, uh, you know, one Johnny Manziel. So there's been some people. There's been a lot of quarterbacks who have generated a, a level of buzz for one reason or another. This move right here by the Cleveland Browns to go out and get a quarterback like Deshaun Watson generated some some buzz as well. Some some negative, some positive. But I will say, um, you know, Deshaun Watson has done uh, all that he's been asked of from the NFL and uh, uh, the front office for of the Cleveland Browns. Uh, and if he hadn't done those things, he probably wouldn't be reinstated. But now he is. Um, and it gets an opportunity to go do something that, that we've been waiting for for a long time is watch this guy play quarterback. Uh, and by all intents and purposes, if he's anywhere what he was when he left the field, he's going to be one of the more exciting players that we've ever had in the history of the Cleveland Browns. I mean, you, you talk about the emotion and riding high. Um, you, you got a victory uh, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And you can't but help think that that victory kind of spawns on some energy and kicks up that energy in the locker room of, of those guys who really feel that, hey, man, this is for a lot of guys like Jadavian Clowney, for a lot of guys like Miles Garrett, for a lot of guys on those defense and offense, they were soup, they're super excited to play uh, with a quarterback like Deshaun Watson because it makes their jobs easier. It makes them be able to go out and play with a little more reckless abandon. It gives Joe Woods a little more opportunity to say, hey, I got a quarterback. I, I'm not too scared about missing uh, assignments, or I'm not too scared about playing conservatively because we got a bona fide guy that can bring us back from some scores and a guy that can, you know, play with the league and a guy who can play from behind. So don't get it twisted. Everybody is super excited. This is the best co coach. This is the best player. Kevin Stefanski's had the ability to coach at quarterback. This is the best quarterback Nick Chubb has been able to play with. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt has been able to, to run the ball with. And it's been the best quarterback that those guys up uh, up front, especially Joe Batonio, have pass protect and, and, and block for. So this is going to be a, a very exciting thing. It's going to be a hostile environment uh, in Houston. Make no bones about it. There will be hosti hostility. And, you know, uh, I'll go back to what Joe Batonio said. He said this is going to be part of what we go through every single game. This is part of what, what it is um, for the foreseeable future. So, you know, for those guys in the locker room, you know, they just have to come together and galvanize ar around each other and realize that there's going to be no friendly, uh, <laughs> no friendly cheers uh, it, it, when you go on the road. And, and it might be some not so friendly cheers even at home. So these are all things you got to consider. Um, but, but but what I'm most excited about is actually seeing his skill set at the on, on display, especially with some of the pieces and parts we have right now, Jeff. Hey, look, there's no reason you can be anything more than excited to see where this is going to go for this team. You know, this is a major, major investment. This is the biggest investment, certainly, that this front office has made. Um when you go all in and, you know, I, I, I'm i sure there's some of us and, you know, taking the, you know, off field stuff, you know, out of the equation, looking at the Denver Broncos right now and going, hmm, huh, what, it, what if maybe it don't work? Like what happens then? That's, that's, you know, certainly something that you were going to be nervous about. You were going to be shaky about. There's no question about this. Um, but for this coach, staff, for this general manager, this absolutely has to work. This doesn't work. Everybody gone. Everybody is gone. And then you're going to be at the point where some of your top players are going to say, look, if we're taking it down to the bare bones, once again, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, for Nick, who is now signed here long term, Miles, who is now signed here long term, they have more than shown their commitment to this organization this is this is huge. And look, you know, there's going to be some rust on Sunday. I'm sure there is. I'd be stunned if there wasn't. You're playing the Houston Texans. That's a week where maybe a little rust ain't going to matter. Browns, I think at this point earlier, a seven-point favor. I only figure that number to rise as the week goes on. But we're going to go a little deeper here. Um, you know, the Browns receivers, we're going to get into that. The wide receivers, the tight ends, the running backs. How is this all going to gel? How is this all going to mesh? As you know, the Browns now are bringing in someone that, you know, they really were pleased with Jacoby Brissett's play, 
But I mean, you know, 64 completion percentage, all this stuff, that, that's the floor. This should be like the worst, worst that Deshaun Watson plays, which was the best that Jacoby Brissett played. I'm going to kick it on, keep it going here. Your latest lockdown Browns, Garrett Bush, Jeff Lloyd, along for the ride. Now a word from Toro. Toro is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Toro, you can book any car you want wherever you want it from a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget across the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. Book a spacious SUV or a minivan for a family road trip. Get a classic or luxury car for a special event, birthday, or holiday. Find affordable economy cars if you're on a budget and just need to get from A to B. Test drive that new electronic vehicle you've had your eye on to see how it fits your everyday life. Many tour hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms, conditions and exclusions do apply forget boring rental cars and find your drive at turo.com welcome back to the locked on browns podcast g bush in the building follow me at g bush 91 follow jeff at jeff underscore lj underscore lloyd uh make sure you guys tap in with us tap in is on in us when when we go two minute warning um really great episode last week we got an opportunity to get that dub um, and it was overtime game. We were on with you guys overtime, Adam the Bull. As always, you know, I don't know how he gets it done, but his his cable is a little bit further than ours. We were able to talk about some some of the stuff that was going on with the Broncaneers and the Browns just kind of celebrate that win. Uh, and if you would have subscribed, hit the notification bell, you would have known right when we go on. So continue to do that. Um, make sure you are as well. Right now we got 55 people live in the chat. Don't forget. Uh, your questions, as always, we will touch down on some of your questions if we have a couple in the third and last segment. So get those uh, submitted in the chat. We will definitely shout those out and answer those questions uh, at the end of the third segment. And also, uh, we'll, it will continue uh, to continue to try to do this thing live, give some interaction here. And don't forget, this thing's going to ramp up. Uh, you know, I've been drinking a Kool-Aid for every Browns victory that this thing hits. We at one now. Deshaun Watson comes back against the Texans. That's two. So now we're on that two-game winning streak, man. So, you know, we're trying to do as much as we can for the 6-0. and We're trying to see what it's going to do. So I'm I'm, pour, I'm pouring out the Kool-Aid for everybody. I got the Kool-Aid ready to go. If you want a oh, tall glass of it, you could wait till after the Texans game. But I got a picture for everybody in Cleveland to join that bandwagon on those wins. Jeff, let's get to uh, what we're talking about uh, with, with these receivers, man. Um, one thing that you're going to see, and we've always thought about it like this, Deshaun Watson is going to elevate the play of your receivers, right? We talked about what he's able to do as far as fitting uh, footballs in, in tight windows. We talked about his arm strength, throws one of the best deep balls in the game. When you add what he's done, what he's traditionally done to what we've seen, some players come around. Uh, listen, we made fun of Anthony Schwartz. We 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 talked about him all off season. I think it's time that you could give Anthony Schwartz a shout out to the young man. I know how it is out here. You're trying to you're trying to cut your teeth into the league. You're, you're getting back on the field because I thought it was going to be a wrap for him. We we hadn't seen. I wasn't expecting to see Anthony Schwartz until sometime next year. Got back on the field. Got the touchdown on the reverse. Caught a ball. Uh, moved the sticks for a first down. You know, it's nothing great. It's nothing over. The, I'm not going to go go die and go crazy over it. But it's some positive steps for a young player trying to find his footing in the league. You look at Donovan Peoples-Jones, who I think has really blossomed this year. Outside chance of getting 1,000 yards. Uh, you look at David Njoku, who we'll talk about next segment, the tight end room, who, uh, you know, could catch the football too. And then you got Amari Cooper, who I think really is a number one receiver. All of these people that we mentioned are going to be theoretically better with a guy like uh, Deshaun Watson, especially what he brings to the table with his legs and extended plays. And he's just not going to come up here and extend plays to kind of run. He's going to extend plays to throw the ball downfield and get big chunk plays. Uh, Jeff, what are you expecting to see from these relationships week one uh, against the Houston Texans? Well, first things first, I do just want to go, you know, just make one comment on Anthony Schwartz. Uh, the hardest thing to do as a young player in the NFL is to get yourself out of the doghouse. It, it's just so so difficult to do. And the fact that Anthony did it through his work of all things, being physical and covering as a gunner on the punt team. I mean, and you start to work your way back in the good graces with the team with that. Um, that's what led to him playing Sunday and Michael Woods and Demetri Felton not playing Sunday. 
Obviously, Anthony got an opportunity. And look, you know, when you're that down, any little bit helps. And for a guy like, you know, Anthony Schwartz, certainly a huge, huge thing. Um, and his accomplishments g- could certainly go up here with a, a, a quarterback who, you know, obviously throws more vertical. You've got Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is about 200 and, and change away from 1,000 yards. Was going to get that 1,000 yards either way. We all know that. Um, but you got a six game stretch here now to see, you know, if this is the guy you think is truly the perfect number one to pair with Deshaun Watson. Um, you know, when you get to see a player day in, day out, week in, week out, you learn more about the players. You know, saying it becomes a not taking an opinion on her as opposed to maybe making an opinion on a player. Amari Cooper's route running, for those who have lauded it over the years, absolutely. He's a special, special guy. He's got he's almost got feet like a soccer player. He is fantastic with his footwork, no missteps, no wasted steps. Um, you know, he's not looking to, you know, end up as a gif on social media with you know by breaking somebody's ankles. He's looking to get open and make a play. So, you know, looking for that increase here, I think Amari Cooper and Deshaun Watson is going to be a relationship that works really, really well. The one here, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and I know there is some talk. Donovan Peoples-Jones is under contract for next year for about a million dollars. So we're probably not going to go that route just yet as far as the future of Donovan Peoples-Jones because it's going to be more of a 23-game sample for Donovan Peoples-Jones. Hopefully more, guys. Um, with Deshaun Watson, but you know, even still for Donovan Peoples Jones, six games to go, he's 407 yards away from a thousand yard season. I'm not sure he's going to get there. Um, but you got to think, well, you know, certainly got a puncher's chance when you're playing with a player like this. For me, the bigger key here, though, it, it is Anthony Schwartz, it is Robert Woods. I mean, sorry, it is um, David Bell, it is Michael Woods. It's about you know, rounding out that room. Because, you know, everybody wanted to talk all off season. Are the Browns going to bring in a veteran receiver? Is there a veteran receiver? You know, Will Fuller was a popular name. Kenny Stills was a popular name. I think those guys are probably past their prime as far as being contributors here. But the Browns have to make over a six-game stretch here some decisions. Do they think David Bell is worthy enough to get 35, 40 targets next year from Deshaun Watson? Uh, do you have, you know, enough faith in Anthony Schwartz that you won't upgrade him? with a veteran um you know for michael woods you know obviously not a big special teamer which led to him sitting next week is there a spot here where he finds you know some time and some a way to grow with deshaun deshaun ain't gonna care who you are if you're open you're gonna get the ball what you do with it is obviously certainly the key here and you know for everybody i remember years ago um if you know nobody truly remembers it's vikings warren moon had chris carter uh had uh, you know, a couple other big time wide receivers. They had a third wide receiver named Jake Reed, and he put up his, you know, they all were sitting for like goals for the year. And Jake Reed was like, oh, 35 for 400. Chris Carr looked at him and said, man, what's wrong with you? We got Warren Moon, dude. He's like, you bet. <laughs> Jake Reed went out and had like 70 for like a thousand. Oh, that was, yeah. I remember that, man. Jake Reed was, Jake Reed was money bags at that time, man. Do you- Jake Reed wasn't playing with nobody. Yeah, Jake Reed never seen a great warm moon in his life, so he you know he didn't realize people played like that level. But this is it here. Your expectations, whatever your expectations are, for most of you, it could be not enough. The other, it, it could be you know what I'm saying. You could be bagging it because you're bagging it, and, and you don't like the guy. You don't like what he did. You don't like what he was involved in. And I understand all that. But the bar is about as high as it could be. You all love Miles Garrett. You all love. position and things have changed drastically here and it should translate to a hell of a run here over these final six games yeah i i think i think one of the things that you'll see man is i think sometimes um when you don't have a situation where you get an opportunity to see whether or not a guy is really good um i think we've forgotten a little bit exactly um, how good Deshaun Watson is. I, I think when you miss two years, you're out of sight, out of mind. We've, we've seen all the other quarterbacks. And sometimes you just forget how good the guy can actually be. It may take him some time to get to that position or to get to a point where they can see it. But I think what you'll see here on, on Sunday is you'll start, you'll, you'll get those flash plays. You'll get those flash plays where you say, wow, look at that throw. Or wow, look at him escape the pocket and get things done. Wow, look, let's throw, you know, all those different things you'll, you'll, you'll see day one. I think moving into week two and week three is where you'll really start to see it shine. And all I'm trying to do is get the Kool-Aid drinkers to, uh, you know, 
We just trying to give as much Kool-Aid out as we can. Because I'm going to tell you what. I actually believe, you know, we talked on an Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show today. They said, what's the ultimate goal or what's the what's the highest level or or what's the most optimistic you can be? What do you think the ceiling is for Deshaun Watson? I said, 6-0. and I look at this schedule. Um, they're not playing any any guys that are, are in, in, uh, that are world beaters, and they they've had the seem to have the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, re- you know, record or seem to have their card. The Ravens are a team that they only lost by a couple points, so there's some winnable games on this schedule. And for the most part, I just think I- I'm just excited to see what the future may hold for the Cleveland Browns, Jeff. Well, it is four road games, which certainly makes for you know a little bit more difficult route, um, and that may also be a good thing. You know, where Deshaun can start to go into some hostile territory and kind of get the understanding of the way it's going to be. Um, it's probably not going to stop anytime soon. Um, I'm sure Deshaun Watson was hounded on the road while he was a quarterback for the Houston Texans. Certainly going to be worse now. Um, but you know, all things and like I said yesterday, uh, you know, some of this is going to be the mental side. And, and you know, how strong is Deshaun Watson about basically keeping all that stuff? out and just focusing on what his job is as the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. Jeff Lloyd, Garrett Bush, we're going to switch it up here, get a little bit of thoughts here about the tight ends. Where will the running backs be involved in a Deshaun Watson passing attack? Just some thoughts from Garrett and I as we continue through here on your latest Locked On Browns. This episode is that we are sure you're going to love. Find Block Forever now wherever you get your podcast. Block Forever is a brand new podcast from former NFL All Pro Ryan Khalil and Audible. Greatest players and personalities of all time. You'll hear Christian McCaffrey talk about his love hate relationship with fantasy football. And Juju Smith Schuster give his most honest opinions on other players and positions in the league. Ryan and guests discuss topics like the player's psyche, sports better, playing pain, being a leader, and how to deal. With competitive teammates, there is nothing that's going to be out of bounds with this show. Catch the full Block Forever series available where you get your podcast available everywhere now. Audible, get in the game. Really want to come back to, and and we'll get back to this super chat. We'll read this G Money Uptown says, and we appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Watson will go six and zero. They uh, the offense is too good, which makes team have to pass the ball more with good DBs. We will blow out every team. Uh, and and the uh, <laughs> and our tight end would go off. See, this is the <laughs> level of Kool Aid that I, I'm pr- putting out. Like this is Harry Buffalo Kool Aid. Like this is this might have alcohol in it. We're handing this out. If you want to be partake, just come and watch the Locked On Browns podcast. We'll do that for you. We'll we'll be handing out free cups of Kool Aid at every turn. Uh, we do want to say thank you for showing up today. Thank you for being a per- participant in the show. Uh, we do want to say also. Make sure you check it out and still download us on uh, on podcast platforms. You can download us uh, everywhere you uh, get your podcast. We'll be there. Obviously, YouTube is winning. We'll put out little things. So 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 far, and I, and I should have did this earlier, but uh, congratulations to being told we went over three hundred and fifty thousand views so far. Jeff, can you believe it? Three hundred fifty thousand views. Not bad. We've been you know we plug along here doing our thing, but I think things will pick up here, especially with Deshaun Watson back in the fold and the Cleveland Browns looking like they want to start a little, uh, start a little uh, revolution here, start a little, start a little good winning streak. So we're trying to do that. So we'll continue to do that. Make sure you hit the subscribe button uh, and make sure you hit the notification bell so you know exactly when we're going to go on. Let's talk about the tight ends a little bit here, Jeff. Uh, first of all, we talk about, you know, excited about, uh, Deshaun Watson, because we haven't seen some things at, at, at quarterback, but man, David and Joku for a lot of people, um, people were really down on him. People were st- extremely down on the signing. People were a little apprehensive because they talked about his hands, uh, not being a great blocker in the beginning, asking for a trade, maybe want to go to another place. But I tell you what, when that trade, when when the signing happened, I, I think both of us kind of told people. That signing was due to who they had coming in. That was a projection of what we feel David and Joku can do when we have a franchise quarterback in the building. And I think what you saw is now David, after the injury, he's starting to take steps and steps, and every single week you're starting to see him unlock some of those things that we've seen glimpses of. The one-handed catch in the back of the end zone with the game on the line, there's there's only a couple tight ends in the game that could do that. 
You, you, you might see your George Kittles. You might see your Kelsey's Mark Andrews from Baltimore. It's very few guys who you would count on in that spot to throw the ball and, and it's fourth down. And, and if you don't get that season's over right now, it's two to about, about a four to 7% chance of, of us making the playoffs. But without that, they're not making that. They're not making the playoffs, and we're not still even talking about the playoffs. But David and Joku's come along, and I think he's going to just be nothing but better with with with, with Deshaun Watson. I think they're going to utilize him more. And I'll tell you what, uh, I'm I think that the tight end room will be back in business because I just think Deshaun Watson is going to give them a different look, and I think they'll be open as well. What are your thoughts, Jeff? The thing with Dave. around 70 for 700 uh that puts him at about you know, five receptions of the next six games playing with deshaun watson to hit that 70 keep in mind there was a little missed time obviously um could you even imagine this though could you imagine at any point over the last couple of years said game is on the line and you threw the ball to david Njoku? i mean Crazy. for what everybody kind of feels about you know had kind of gotten their licks and kicks in on david Njoku over the years um, showed up when the time was there. Um, you found a way where th things can be played complementary, and this was the difficulty with Jarvis Landry and Aldo Odell Beckham Jr. They didn't want to go out there and do their role and have somebody else get the ball. Facts are facts. They didn't. They wanted every stinking ball thrown their way, and there's nothing worse than a quarterback coming back to the huddle after you've completed a pass and have another wide receiver say, yeah, I was open. I was open. Dude, shut up, man. I, I got five of you to feed. This isn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, so, David, look, this is going to be legit. His statistical production, um, you know, is he ever going to match a Kelsey? Probably not. Kelsey is the number one target of the Kansas City Chiefs. That's literally why they moved on with Tyree Kill to feature him for a year or two more before, you know, Kelsey, you know, starts to, you know, decline a little bit, a little bit older than, you know, people think Travis Kelsey. You know, Harrison, Brian, we'll see how it works here. Harrison is a tough, tough spot um I, I think he's not exactly what the browns are hoping he would be um the the receiving game has never parlayed into what they were hoping he would be um certainly gonna have their eyes you know i said a million times they should have been looking at the tight end market last year when it was a ridiculous class oh by the way jelani was last night if y'all watched there was a guy i stood in my chair and tried to scream for uh almost every round before he was finally selected you need to you know get more involvement here you know, obviously Harrison Brown's going to get a chance over the couple of games. But the, me, gee, the tricky part to figure out here is where exactly – and this really hasn't been a big factor this year to begin with. Um, and they've kind of moved away from it a little bit, which takes away certainly the appeal and the production and what you get from a guy like Kareem Hunt is you know, where do the running backs equate or factor into this passing game going in the future with Deshaun Watson because it already looks like it was kind of sizzling out to begin with. Yeah, uh, uh, the running back game, uh, look, you know, they got Nick Chubb about, uh, I want to say over 20 carries, which worked out, but there was overtime involved in that. Um, and it looks like Kareem Hunt has been, uh, you know, phased out of the game plan. I'm wondering what type of game plan it's going to be. Now that you have uh, Deshaun Watson, will you see more Kareem Hunt slotted out? Will you see more of the screen game? But we have had have seen, you know, the wide receiver screens a little bit towards tight ends. How would all of these things change? I think that's that's one of the big question marks that we have. Uh, and, and what would this run pass uh, look be? I think there's a lot of people that will say, hey, we was want Nick Chubb before for 25 carries. I don't think they'll complain too many times if they see Deshaun Watson throwing his fair share of the football down the field. Uh, Nick, Nick, uh, you, we definitely want to see you still get the rock. However, we still want to see what Deshaun Watson is, is, is talking about here as well. We got maybe one question that kind of ties into that, Jeff, and I'll let you have the first bite at it. Um, Buck says, any regret not trading Kareem Hunt, not himself this year? Um, want to see Ford burst uh, see Ford burst to spark run game. What are your thoughts on, on Kareem Ford? Or, um, the mix the two Kareem Ford. That's a really good <laughs> running back. Right, what are your thoughts about Jerome Ford getting the opportunity? We've seen him on a kickoff game. And do you think you could see possibly see more than him uh, of him than Kareem Hunt moving forward? forward the thing with kareem and kareem isn't always hasn't had the greatest vision obviously he makes up for it with his physicality but the thing i think i noticed the most with kareem is it, it looks like a little little more 
lack of speed. I, I, it just doesn't seem like he's as fast as he was. Um, I'm, I, the Browns were hoping to get a top 100 pick for him. They didn't, so they weren't going to move him. It was a tough spot. Um, we all know that relationship is pretty much over as much as it hurts because I think everybody loves Kareem. Everybody loves that Nick and Kareem are tight. Um, but financially, it don't make no sense. Jerome Ford, um, I would say, you know, there's been about four games, if not five games this year, where he's had a really solid kick return. Um, and to be able to run like that in that chaos with kick return, um, you certainly want to see some, you know, some you know, in down reps. You know, you, you want to see that happen for him. And for me right now, I mean, the pecking order, yeah, I'd probably give Jerome Ford a couple of carries over Kareem Hunt. Dearness Johnson isn't playing. Demetri Felton, you know, is off in the, you know, basically the odd man out everywhere, the wide receiver room and the running back room. Yeah, it's certainly time to get Jerome Ford involved here um, because you're going to lose – Two running backs, most likely, most likely Demetri Felton is not going to be on this roster last year. You've got to understand where you are with Jerome Ford. And, you know, do you think Jerome Ford is a good enough player that he could be one snap away from being your starting running back? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that, that we'll see a lot more of him. Um, one, one more time, we got another super chat. David, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, G Money Up Town says, uh, and we appreciate the super chat. David will uh, be Kelsey, uh, <laughs> Kittle Kelsey level. Kittle. <laughs> Kelsey Kittle level. Watson has never played on what an offense like this. Uh, excited as an understatement, he performed elite without a running game. Uh, thank you so much for that. So, you know, I think in, in, in conclusion, I think there's a lot of things that you can look for that we haven't even dug into just the surface level what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. We talked about three things here. Pretty much how we talked about, uh, you know, the wide receivers, how that affected the game, uh, the tight end position where they still continue to find that that end zone and find the report there. Uh, and then the running backs. How does the running back position change? Will you see more of Kareem Hunt? Will you see more of the screen game? And how will that affect the way the Cleveland Browns attack defenses with their running game? Uh, Jeff, your thoughts before you uh, you take us home? Uh, it's, you know, there's a lot to it. There really is. I mean, you know, you, you like what's here. You love this talent's here. You certainly got to see the way it plays with Deshaun Watson. I know you guys seem still excited about Kareem Hunt. It's 3.9 yards per carry behind one of the better offense lines in the NFL as far as run blocking is concerned. I see a guy who's closer to out than he is certainly closer to in. Let's just at that um let me just get this in here uh, another super chat for sure watson will enhance the offense but will be he be able to come over some of the games the defense just doesn't show up at all that's the point you're supposed to think he is able to do that guys um we appreciate y'all for being here today um obviously this is an historical week leading up to hopefully which will you know be uh, the cleveland browns walk into houston and beat the texans down because if this game is a nail biter it's close by any means whatsoever you're all going to be here with myself, G, Mike, and of course, Bull. And everybody's going to be like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, here we go. But I, I think the Browns are going to walk in. We got obviously a bunch more. I, I think they're going to show extremely well on Sunday. Um, I think he's going to be, you know, you're almost going to have to put him back into the bottle, so to speak, is how fired up Deshaun Watson is going to be. We appreciate everybody who takes the time for us every day here at Locked On Browns. On behalf of Garrett Bush, the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, 92.3 The Fans, The Barbershop, of course, pregame, postgame coverage, Buckeyes, Browns, Cavaliers, and Cleveland Guardians. Uh, at G Bush 91 make sure you follow over there. Myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Uh, the show at Locked On Browns. Again, wherever you get your podcast, make sure you subscribe. You're following the Locked On Browns podcast on YouTube. Subscribe notifications on hit that like button as much as you can for us guys we do appreciate that and if you got roku go ahead check the roku app put in locked on cleveland sports you will find locked on browns locked on guardians locked on cavaliers and of course the crew at the ultimate cleveland sports show deshaun watson is back kids. buckle up this has been your daily delivery of all things dog pound lgb on the lob let's go browns You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.